Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Decently Indecent, episode 26. I'm your host, Leon Lush, and I appreciate your presence here with me, whether that's watching this on video or listening on Spotify or Apple. I just watched a video um, about depression. <laughs> and let, what, a, what an intro. Listen, don't abandon yet. What an intro to a podcast. It was, uh, it was a video from a YouTuber who I hadn't heard his name in years. Um, his name's D'Angelo Wallace. He's a he's a commentator. He made videos on topics similar to stuff I might talk about years ago. He he blew up. He's still doing very, very well. He has two channels. The last I heard of him personally was years ago. He got in some sort of controversy. I, I can't even remember what that controversy is now, but just randomly this video popped up in my feed and it was titled, Does Anyone Else Feel Like They'll Never Be Happy? And so I watched some of it just because I thought it was interesting. I, I do have a propensity to watch the more raw side of YouTube, people being authentic, letting their guard down online. Um, I do a little bit of that in this podcast, honestly, so, which has been a new experience for me. And even today, you know, I, I had, uh, I was going to talk about something totally different and I had some notes, but I was just in a little bit of a funk tonight. You know, and just one of those ways where I was like, ah, I just wasn't feeling what I was researching, what I wanted to talk about and just got into one of those moods where I was scrolling, just looking for something to, you know, fill my coffers, <laughs> my emotional coffers. And just, I was like, shit. And this came up and I watched it and I was like, God, man, it's interesting. Um, I, I was thinking earlier about, again, prompted by another YouTube video I watched about the idea of like being who you are. I know that's a, it's a bit of a meme, I think, in our, in our culture, right? You, if anytime you're listening to motivational, inspirational content or, you know, you get advice from people that you admire, it's like, well, you just got to be yourself. You just got to, you just, just be who you are, be yourself. I'm sure I've probably said it maybe on this podcast before and shit, I don't know, but, but part of me, when I hear that, thinks to myself, what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> Cause there is an element to life being a never-ending journey of self-discovery. So when you say be who you are, I mean, I, I get that on the surface level of try to stay authentic to your beliefs and your core values and don't jeopardize those to appease other people or to seek external validation. That makes a lot of sense. But the other side of that to me is the struggle of trying to figure out, you know, who are you? And maybe, maybe not everyone feels this way. I think in my life, if I had to answer that question throughout the years, that, that changes drastically as you, as you continue through life and you get a little bit older and you have more experiences to draw upon. And so while part of me thinks I do a, a pretty good job of being who I am, there's this other side of me, this kind of darker side of me that is in perpetual turmoil because it feels like maybe I'll never figure it out at the same time in a nihilistic kind of way. And that's just me spitballing. But I want to hark back to the beginning of this this, this video from D'Angelo Wallace, this D'Angelo Wallace, just this YouTuber. He's 26. He's a young cat, right? A lot younger than I am. He went through a really depressive episode when he was 21, 22. I had to take a break. There was some some drama surrounding that. I know a lot of kids, a lot of people are depressed. A lot of kids are depressed. I was intrigued by the way he framed it. And he gets emotional in the video, um, just talking about his experience and how difficult it's been to struggle with, you know, the, the, the fantasies around not being around anymore and some really dark shit. But he kind of came to this conclusion that A, he's, he's good. He's not going anywhere, which is wonderful to hear, obviously. And, and B, he's had to come to terms with the fact that you know, it's not for him, at least, that this this depression that he has, these feelings are not something that he can just beat or like hit this button one day and they just go away. It's more along the lines of something that you just have to learn how to make room for in your life. Kind of like the dark passenger in a weird way. That was a that's a term I'm I'm lifting from the show Dexter. For Dexter, it was his proclivity for wanting to kill people. <laughs> Right, he had to live with his dark passenger, and he learned how to cover up his sociopathy and live a normal life, in spite of the fact that he had this hunger 
to kill people. <laughs> Same idea, different scenario, but everyone deals with just general depression. Uh, it's one of the most common human emotions, just like happiness, joy, excitement, all these things at a normal level. And then I, I think some people struggle with it worse than others. But my experience has been a little bit all over the place. You know, I, I'm fortunate in the way that I, I haven't, I haven't dealt in my life with a lot of potent trauma. I've had bumps and bruises, normal ups and downs of life, but I've just been fortunate, luck of the draw, whatever you want to call it. I was blessed with an incredible family. I've obviously had some failed relationships and some some emotional baggage that's, that goes along with that, but I've truly never really been through something life-alteringly traumatic. I think for a lot of people, that is just, you know, there's certainly... There's certainly people that exhibit behaviors and do things that might give them a higher percentage chance of that happening, obviously. But there are things outside of our control that just happen in this universe, whether you want to call it God, whether you want to call it fate, whatever you want to call it. Some people just go through it, you know, and it's can be difficult for them to recover from, from those, from those traumas. For me, I've had a pretty good life. I'm blessed and I'm grateful, but I still experience the full range of human emotions. Actually, let me back up. I should say you don't have to have experienced some sort of crazy trauma in order to feel depressed either or go through bouts of depression. I've definitely had periods in my life where there was extended periods of time where in hindsight, I think I was going through some sort of depression. You could go on for hours and speculate about why and what was I doing, the external factors, different things like that. <clears throat> I certainly don't feel like I'm uh, there right now, but uh, on any given day that I've noticed, I can go from, it's so crazy, the range, the range, the spectrum of emotion you can feel in one day. Like I can sometimes wake up in the morning and feel so bent and out of it and like nihilistic, like, man, I just want to crawl into a hole, just really feeling low. And then not but four hours later after I'm properly caffeinated, and I'm in the gym getting a workout in. I've lifted weights and I'm like on the bike cruising, listening to some music I love. I'm like, dude, I could fucking, I could literally conquer the world right now. I could absolutely just, I can do fucking anything. And I don't know what that is, but it's fucked up. And I think about it a lot. I'm like, man, like not but four hours ago, I felt like I wanted to just fall asleep for a month and not even look at a single responsibility. And now I feel like I can do anything. And I, I think there's an element of that that is external stimulation because I'm even when I'm feeling that that way, I still have these habits in certain things that I do that I know will help steer me in the right direction and help lift my mood. And even when I'm feeling unmotivated to do those, I have fortunately gotten to a routine where I have the discipline to do them anyways. And it really helps. And that obviously for me is uh, exercise and physical activity. And there's, there's other things as well, being outside, putting phones down, being in nature, stuff like that. But I think we're in such an interesting, interesting is not the right word. I don't know. I just think culturally we're, we're in a tough spot right now because I don't know the statistics. I just know I like hear sound bites online about, I guess that the instances, the rate, the prevalence of depression or how we're diagnosing it has been just climbing feels like steadily in younger population in younger populations kids younger kids I'm sure it spans all age groups you know part of the reason I enjoy doing these talks and it's it 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 um, it feels a little strange because I know there's going to be some people listening on the other end as you are right now but it's it's been a an incredible tool for me to learn more about myself and try not to, in an effort to try not to be afraid to say the things that I feel, even if I feel like they're unkind or inappropriate or whatever. And, and, and depression's always been an interesting topic for me. I mean, because you have two camps. There's actually, there's a lot of camps, but kind of the two, the two polar opposite camps are like what I would consider the, the depression obsessed side of uh, the argument, which is people that just won't stop fucking talking about it. They're constantly in therapy. They're just obsessed with the fact that they have depression and 
part of my feeling around that is it is a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're constantly ruminating and talking and thinking about your problems at all times and you're going to therapy multiple times a week, that's going to become your identity. And now you're just a depressed person. And now you're just fighting with depression because you're constantly just ruminating on it and lining the pockets of these therapists while you do it. And I'm no scholar. I'm not saying that therapy isn't good. I'm sure there's a lot of incredible applications for therapy in a lot of different ways. But then the flip side of that argument is like the Andrew Tate's, right? Where it's like depression isn't real. And he goes on these rants about how it's kind of a weak, weak-minded mentality. And it's like, if I'm depressed, I can just do this thing and, and, and we'll lift it. And that side of it gets people really pissed. I mean, the, this particular topic is something that it's hard to have any sort of hardline stance without getting uh, some people really, really upset. But I like to typically lead with empathy as best I can, especially as somebody who has dealt with no the normal human emotions of what I would consider depression, but have never been in a position where it's it's been to the point where it was, you know, ruining my life or giving me thoughts that were uh, going to be harmful in some kind of way. So I feel like it would be ignorant of me to really speak to it as if I know the answers when I haven't actually been in the darkest depths of it, like I know some people have. And so I think there's just a, I think there's a, a lot of, there's a lot of gray area. And I spoke about this last week, as you guys know, um, I, the episode I did last week that I titled The American Dream being... Uh, what did I say? Being fat, depressed, and chronically medicated. And these things tend to tie together in the way I spoke about it last week as well, where how the body is so interconnected, how our diet, our gut health, our brain, our neurons, every single part of us is a, it's a, it's a system that works in beautiful harmony together. One of the most complex unfathomable scientific marvels, the human body, everything working in harmony to create life and to give us this beautiful experience on earth that can be so beautiful. I think the way we've treated depression in this country, a lot of ways is like the way we treat obesity and health issues, high blood pressure. It's like, we're not trying to treat people in a way that is going to get to the core of the problem, we just medicate them. We give them SSRIs and we give them whatever the fuck else. I mean, there's, you name you name it, however many drugs there is now to treat this disease. And my sentiment is almost as, is similar to how I feel about the obesity epidemic and the health epidemic in this country, where I think there's obviously situations where pharmaceutical intervention makes sense. And it's better than the alternative of not treating it at all. And I think that's true with, I guess, what I would say mental diseases as, as well as in addition to physical diseases. But I also think there is unbelievable incentives to continue to make sure that this industry that profits billions of dollars, billions and billions, trillions of dollars off of people's sickness and unhappiness they're incentivized to keep that money train rolling i know that it's unique for every individual too i think as if I, as i've wrestled with this particular issue the last five six seven eight years and as i've become more prevalent online and just seen a lot of youtubers a lot of people opening up about it obviously as the age of social media has dawned on us the past decade or two it's talked about much more. People share their stories. I have, again, when I try to lead with empathy, but I have this part of me and it's it's almost like it's, it's an inner dialogue, I think, that mostly talks to myself that it's very like just man up pussy, right? And I don't, like, I would never say that to somebody, obviously, <laughs> But these, my, that's where my thoughts go. And this is, this is typically what I'm talking to myself when I'm in a phase where I'm feeling unmotivated or like really down and out, feeling really low. I'm just like, well, a couple of things, Leon. First of all, nobody fucking cares. All right. So definitely don't try and dump this on somebody else. I'm not saying you shouldn't talk to somebody if you're feeling down, but there's, there's absolutely this innate, piece of, I guess, my masculine identity that feels like the world doesn't give a shit how you feel. Nature doesn't give a shit. Nobody gives a shit. Your only responsibility is to figure it out 
and do whatever you can to make the best life possible for you and your family. And in saying that, I know that 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 would that's probably perceived as incredibly unhealthy, maybe, but like I feel like that's there is an element of truth to that at the same way. And if the route to getting healthy is the typical route, therapy, medication, all these things, that's fine. I've always been more interested in trying to take the lifestyle route through uh, sleep, circadian rhythm, sunlight, nature, diet, all these things, all of the, all of the, the, the data backed, or I should say the research backed data that suggests there's a lot of lifestyle choices that you can make that have a massive implication on your mental health. But again, when it comes to incentives, it's very easy to just kind of ignore those because the easy route is just to go to the doctor and be like, I'm feeling really depressed. I can't, I can't take it anymore. I need this. And then boom, you're now on this thing for um, the rest of your life or not. Some people use it temporarily and it's wonderful. And again, I, I, I know that there's going to be some of you listening or watching right now that deal with this personally or know someone you're close to that is is on some sort of uh pharmaceuticals to, to deal with depression and this is not this is not an effort to try to talk down on that at all this is just me trying to extrapolate and explore my thoughts and how i feel about it in a way that helps me better understand the situation hopefully and maybe could spark some insight as you as well and maybe could spark a little insight uh, and you as well. And again, I know it's weird because it's just, it feels like this specifically is one of those topics that's difficult to talk about because it's so personal to so many people. So here we are with a little <clears throat> snifter Jameson getting personal. <laughs> I have this moral, this moral battle that goes on inside of me. And I'm going to try to ex explain this the best that I can. And this, this is not as much related to depression as it is empathy and masculinity but it plays into how I view people that are constantly self-wallowing and constantly talking about their problems and dealing with this shit. Like that becomes their identity. It, it, it ties into that. There's a part of me that's that's somewhere like deep down inside under layers of irony and sarcasm and, and all these different things that is, that is very empathetic to the human condition, humans in general. And I see people suffering and in pain and have normal feelings of empathy, but then there's definitely a calloused part of me too that is I don't know how you how you would call it. Like I th I think a lot about so many so many of my friends that are ex-military. I obviously have some 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 friends in Texas that I go down to visit once in a while. Um, a lot of them are veterans and ex-military. A lot of them have seen combat, lots of it, killed people, seen people die, stuff that really hardens the soul stuff that you have to be calloused for, stuff that I've never gone through. As anyone who's a veteran or, or ex-military knows, a lot of these ex-military guys, they adopt um, this almost a very dark sense of humor where it's just so easy to joke about some of the most horrific things, almost out of necessity, I think. And I spoke about this with with Eli, um, the, the one of the hosts of Unsubscribe podcasts uh, in the second episode of, of this podcast. You know, it, it's almost out of necessity because you're, you're going through some of the most horrific situations. It's just this coping mechanism. And so you create this kind of calloused, kind of this hardened shell, I think, that you then go through life with. And it can be hard, I would imagine, to have empathy for people going through normal issues that aren't traumatic life and death situations, like a lot of these guys that have had to see war. And I'm just, I'm spitballing here because again, I've, I, I'm not an ex-military guy. I have military. There's ex-military in my family, but that kind of calloused view of the world that like, you know, rub some dirt on it. Nobody gives a shit about you. It doesn't matter. Stop fucking crying. Like that, like the bullshit, like normal masculine, you're not allowed to feel feelings type of thing. There is a part of me that resonates with that and understands that because when it comes down to it, globally, Historically, this world we live in is an incredibly cruel place. And I mean, if you look at any point in history, it is always the most calloused, sociopathic type A personalities that typically survive and thrive <laughs> throughout history in a fucked up way. You know, I think about like, well, if you, you know, if shit really hit the fan, 
right? Society collapsed and crumbled. Like who's going to survive in that landscape? It's not going to be the people that are on TikTok crying about fucking depression and shit all day long. It's going to be the motherfuckers that are joking about death every day and have an arsenal of fucking weapons. And you know what I mean? Like that's, that's the nature of the world. But we now have cultivated this society where it's, we have all of these comforts and all of these things that allow us to dig a little bit deeper and get sad and feel lonely. And you know, that it's, it's, it just goes back to that, that meme of, uh, you know, hard times create strong men, strong men create good times, good times create weak men. And then weak men create hard times and the cycle continues. So that part resonates with me, that idea. I'm, I'm kind of a firm believer that that is, that is kind of the law and order of nature so I'm aware of that, but I'm also very aware that's not necessarily who I am. There is a a part of me, as I said before, that is that is that is in there that is hyper empathetic, and I I I sometimes go through these weird moments where I'm like overwhelmed with empathy or sadness over something kind of innocuous, and it can be anything. Like I've spoken about this on the in videos I've done with my wife where we've watched clips of soldiers coming home and like seeing their kids or like a, a military dad coming home and surprising his son at a basketball game or even vice versa when it's like a dad whose son is deployed and he comes home and surprises the dad. And there's like, I, I, I honestly almost get choked up just thinking about it. And I'm, I don't know what it is. And I try and self-reflect like, why does that affect me so deeply? Why am why like because there's so many things I can I can watch that are maybe I'd say watch there's obviously we're in an age now where we're just consuming content all the time and we see and hear of the most awful shit happening in the world at all times. By default, in our nature, like you build a little bit of callousness because of that. But there are specific things. It could be a fucking stupid commercial, something, but I'll and it doesn't happen often, but I'll have this um this intense bout of like empathetic grief when it's over i'll be like wow i don't cry very often but there was one this was maybe this was maybe like a year and a half ago where what it was literally one of these soldier videos and i like had i just out of fucking nowhere and it, this, i just had this just had this cry i got done and i was like what the fuck just happened i was i was, I was like i got fucking punched in the face i couldn't believe it came out of nowhere and then i think there's that element of like you know, you bottle things up or you're just kind of compartmentalizing other stresses in your life. And then this particular emotion triggers you and it allows these emotions to start flowing through you. And it was certainly cathartic. I definitely don't want to be that guy that cries all the time. No, like, like, like I said, I, the other side of that coin, I think there is a, a necessary part of masculinity that, that requires you to be hardened in a way. But I think there can be a balance. I think it's unhealthy to pretend like your emotions aren't real and your feelings aren't aren't valid feelings as a man, as a provider, or whatever it is, whatever your role is in our society as a, as a as a male. I'm speaking strictly out of my own experience. Sorry, ladies, if you're listening, just trying to give some insight. But the other side of that is, I certainly don't want to be kind of like this soft, weepy, just pussy ass bitch, right? Like that's that's not. <laughs> There's not a fucking female on earth that finds that attractive. You know what I'm saying? And there's a funny element too. I've, I've, I've read a little bit of research on this idea too, where it's, and I've spoken about this, where it's, I think it's so important for men to have other men that they feel comfortable around sharing feelings with. I recently had a, an interaction with a good friend of mine where I tried to provide that to him because I think there's just so many, so many guys really going through it. They just don't have the relationships in their life. You know, everything's just like partying and beer and like video games and memes. But like, if you have a guy you can turn to that will look at you and put his hand on your shoulder and say, brother, it's to you tell me what's on your mind, man. What is chewing you up? I'm here to listen to you. I am here to, to not only be ears, but to offer my voice if you need it. But the most important part is that you're there. I think that is so fucking important. But the flip side of that is, as a guy, you know, in a relationship, as a husband myself and with a wife and a son, 
there are a lot of feelings and issues that might be affecting me deeply that I could benefit from talking to some other men in my life that I'm close with that I wouldn't want to bring to my wife. And I don't know exactly how to phrase that in a way. Like, I'm not saying my wife and I aren't, like, she's my best friend. I'm so lucky. We're very close and we are, we tell each other everything, right? Quote, unquote, everything that a couple would. But like, I'm, I don't, I don't, as, as the man in the relationship, I don't want to burden her with things that she can't relate to because men and women serve such different roles, not only in relationships, but in our culture and in general. And I think that's where the disparity is and why it's so important for, for men to have other men they can reach out to and, and, and converse with, because there are just some things as a dude, as a man in this culture, in our society, that your girl couldn't relate to, that your woman couldn't relate to, that your mom couldn't relate to. And that's okay. And it's vice versa too. Same thing with, same thing with women. That's fine. That's just how it is. But just be yourself, they say. That's it. Rule number one. Just be yourself. That's all. Well, in my experience, that's probably the hardest, it's probably the hardest part of life. And this could be, this could not, I, there's definitely some people I know that are, are probably, they are just blessed with, um, this part of the brain that is incapable of giving a single fuck about anything else in what other people think. And so they are on a, you know, just unashamedly themselves at all time. And you know, these type of people. And oftentimes these people are the ones that are the most brash and can be almost sometimes a little, um, you know, nerve wracking to be around in certain situations. But part of me is so envious of that <laughs> because because most people, no matter how well you know yourself and, and how much you are comfortable in your own skin, which I consider myself very comfortable in my own skin, but most people have that piece of them that that is impossible to turn off, which is like this, this little kind of compass that is always taking into consideration how this is going to look to, to this particular person or how it's going to whatever. And I think that's okay because in order for a civilized society to even exist... There needs to be some sort of consideration for other people. And I think it's possible to be yourself and be comfortable in your own skin while being considerate and empathetic. And that is typically my goal in life. Uh, as I traverse uh, my 30s into my 40s now and I'm running a business and I'm getting into golf and I'm raising a son and I'm a husband and it's just, um, it's a pretty, it's a pretty wild, I don't know, no one, you know, when you're a kid, when you're younger and you're not, 20s, like all the old hats can tell you what it's like growing up. Oh yeah, growing up is this, growing up is that. But no one knows what the fuck growing up is like until you go through it yourself. It's fucking different for everybody, man. And I don't know where you guys are at in your growing up journey, whether you're older than I am or you're in your 30s like me, whether you, you're in a relationship or you have kids, you have a family. Just know that I'm out here going through it with you, you know? I'm doing okay. I have my moments. I have my days, like I spoke about earlier. I feel the feelings. <laughs> we all have that, but I just think that as long as we can commit to trying to be ourselves, and if that just means, you know, committing to this idea of this never ending journey of self discovery, like I'm at a phase right now where I'm going through a bit of a transition. I've gotten into some new hobbies. I'm posting some golf content on Instagram because it's something I love to do. This podcast is obviously a little bit more of a mature side of me than I'm putting out there that is not going to get the same traction as like normal haha funny videos, but it's something that's been great for my own journey of self-discovery as I continue to try and whittle down and get to the core of like what my purpose is here, what I want to provide to the people around me. And even just, even as, even as my role as somebody who makes content for the internet, I think about that a lot. And I probably don't talk about it as, I don't know even if I'm as honest with myself as I should be about that. Cause I just sometimes feel like a captain of a ship without a rudder. And I'm just like, where the fuck are we going? But I think anytime you run a business and anytime you're doing something that's a little bit out of the ordinary, I think that's probably normal to feel that way. And that's okay. So if you're out there, whatever you're going through, whether you, whatever you're going through right now, I'm out here going through it too. And I don't know what the answers are for you. You know, I know we spoke a little bit about this depression piece because I watched that video and I just wanted to speak on it because I think there are some lifestyle choices that could, that could, absolutely blow people away with how much it would change their outlook and how they feel about this life. 
but I, on the other side of things, think life is cruel and some people just have a brain or whatever it is and look through life through a lens that is maybe a little bit more, a little bit more grim. And if that's you, I'm rooting for you. I truly am. Everyone, all of us have our own battles that we're going through. We're all fighting. So the least we can do is try and recognize that. And when we're interacting and around other people, it's funny, you know, I, I love the idea and this is an obvious saying, but they're just kind of a bit of a, a popular saying at this point, but this idea that it's so useless to be self-conscious and worried about other people and what they think about you because everyone is just so fucked up and worried over themselves and their own lives that nobody cares. So why not do that thing you want to do? Why, you know, that thing you've been putting off because you're a little nervous or concerned, some, oh, you might fail or it might go bad or you might, it might not go the way you want it. Like nobody cares except you. So go out and do that thing. <laughs> whatever that thing is. And with that, I say Salancha. Enjoy the rest of your week. We'll be back next week with a new episode. I'm planning on uh, getting a few guests I have in the works. I know I've been on a little bit of run of solo apps just because I've been enjoying these, but I'm ready to start talking to some, uh, start talking to some people. We're going to get back to it. And if you've been listening to a few episodes or this is your first one, uh, know that I appreciate you being here. And I hope you found at least part of this valuable. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace.